right now, a worker really does not have any place to go if there's some sort of harassment. So okay. listen at all the things that can happen. We talk about sexual harassment, we talk about harassment in the workplace. This is if collective bargaining is removed. If it's removed, if it's removed. Because where do they go to have that conversation? Who do they talk to? You know, so that... So, so that, let me be the devil's advocate on this okay. from the private sector, right. if you will. That's right. Where does the private sector go if there's such a related issue in the private sector's place of business? They have, you know, they go to their local civil rights commission, they go to a, 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 a court of law. Right, they that, can't, and they can't, they can't. Yeah. And, they, and, and none of that is, I mean, anyone, whether a union or whatever, right. any of you can do that. Mm -hmm. It's just that the union is the first step in the process because that's what has been done, you know, over the years. Okay. And so, but so how does it hurt the public worker if they have to go to the same remedies that the private sector has to go to well, the, the with regards to resolving it's, a, a it's problem? It's not so much hurting. It's not so much hurting. Okay. It's the cost that could be the potential cost. Okay. If I had no other recourse, and I'll just use myself as, as a public example, worker. As a public worker. If okay. I had no other recourse, I now will seek an attorney. Right. I will go to an attorney, thereby costing the place of my employment, you know, high dollars of money to solve a case that I could probably solve okay. in a short amount of time. Does that make sense? So you're saying that this, if the collective bargaining is removed, that the cost is imparted back on the state for that worker to defend themselves? Well, I think it would be. I think it could be. Okay. I think I think it could be. I think it could be. So, so I think we want to be, I think, just like so many other things that we, we put together, we always have something in place to kind of offset those high dollar costs. Mm -hmm. Collective bargaining helps do that because, number one, the worker knows he or she can go to, you know, to help alleviate any problems that, potential problems mm -hmm. that could happen. And now, and actually, if you think about it, I mean, although there are state and local um, things that are already out there, and I think of things like, and let me just give you an example. Um, you, you talked about the civil rights. You can go to the civil rights board. Um, if it's an OSHA issue, you can go to OSHA. I mean, there's right. things that you can do. You can do all that. But if you didn't have any of those, if you didn't have any of those, what would you do? But we do have all of those. So. I know. But yeah. we're, we're doing, we're, we're, I'm just yeah. saying, and I know I'm reaching, I'm reaching here. But all, my whole point is that. If we eliminate this, yeah. pretty soon we're going to start eliminating other things. Like this. Okay. So, that's so let's, let's imagine, though, that, I mean, if someone has a grievance, they're a public worker, and they're getting treated poorly by their superior, uh -huh. or work conditions are unacceptable, right. these are the, the concerns. Right. They already pay their union dues, right? right? So isn't it up to their leadership and their union to go represent them to, to um, remedy those situations? Well, here's how, here's how this happens. Okay. First of all, and I'll just take this, I've been a union steward for a long time. Here's what happens. If I have an issue, if, I, if I've been accused of something, it is up to me to bring it to that person. Mm -hmm. So I take my concern and say, here's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Then they'll take a look at it, and then they'll say, well, how does that violate you know, whatever, whatever rule collective or bargaining law. agreement, whatever it is. Uh -huh. So we look at that, and if it is a viable complaint, yes. and it meets all those standards, uh -huh. and by the way, non-union people will do the same thing too. If it is viable, their complaint is just as valuable. That complaint will go to that, will, the union steward will go to say, have that conversation with the administrator, and will say, whatever it is, and then those two um, will have conversation about it, and there can be many things. Um, the, the union person can come, but more than likely that person who's affected will come in, and they'll have a conversation around whatever has happened. They can do, resolve it. Um, sometimes people can be moved to other places, or you know, sometimes they can be fired or whatever. I mean, there's a myriad so of So you're saying without collective bargaining, though, that process goes away? What I'm saying is that it makes it more difficult. It okay. makes it much more difficult. And people, as you know, when you become frustrated, what happens is that people who are not strong people, who are not strong, what they're going to do is they're going to, well, I'm going to get to give up. I'm going to quit. I'm not going to do anything. I don't want people doing that. What I want people doing is to be able to have a process, and that's what this is. This is a process so that they are able to talk to someone and help them figure out, and it may be such a thing that maybe they did not look at this correctly. We may be able to point them in the right direction. It's not that that, that they're always right, because that's not always the case. Right, right. It could be that they could be, they could have a, 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 a different view, and maybe we need to help them get along with this. And it could be not. In the case of it's a personnel, a personnel thing, one of the things that we don't get into is personalities. Okay. If it is a personality issue, that's yeah. not one we deal with. Yeah. We say 
here's the deal. That's a personal issue. You and that person need to deal with that. Yeah. Let me ask this real quick because I know other people want to talk yeah. to you. Um, uh, the 84 percent of the of the public worker sector that, that doesn't pay anything of their health premium. Mm -hmm. Are you in support of them paying anything? And, you know, like I said, now this is, this is, I can't speak for anybody else. Um, well, I mean, if a measure came calls. forward to the assembly that said, hey, we want 80, those people are paying zero to pay 1% or 10%, I mean, right, right, a right. number. Right. Are you in support of them paying anything? I don't know that. You know, that's hard to know that because, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to get away from saying that. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that bill looks like. You okay. absolutely have no idea. I'm just talking about the general concept. No, I, I can't do that either because okay. I don't know what that bill's going to look like. Okay. So you can you can throw me numbers, but those numbers are not going to be realistic. Well, to we're at zero now yeah, for 84%. Zero now. I know, I know, I'm I know. just talking anything yeah, above I, zero. Yeah. Now, for me, I said earlier, if you heard my comment, uh -huh. my comment was I said, I don't mind because I know the cost of health care mm -hmm. goes up. Right, right, and so right. if you're asking me to pay something, you know, if, if it's reasonable, I totally understand. And I don't, I'm not going to. Well, the question him. becomes what's reasonable. Well, there you There's go. There's the there big, you, you know. But the conversation has to exist. That's and fair. we're not going to get there okay. until we have constant conversation. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Take care. Uh -huh.